everyone, welcome to the story behind the photo. I'm with one of my faves again, Mr. Joe McNally, man of many talents. Well, thank you very much. Um, this isn't just a story behind one photo. I mean, it's a story behind multiple images here. So we've got like some serious story time with Joe. I've worked for the Geographic for a long time and you know, it's a very, it's a terrific magazine. I mean, let's face it, they do good work and and the thing about the Geographic is you talk about, you know, um, being reverent and all of that, you know, and I, they are quintessentially reverent. And I get it, you know, there's reasons for that. They're very good at what they do. They're an old institution and all that sort of stuff. But, mm -hmm. you know, I kind of am a little bit of a wild card. I kind of have bounced around the hallways there for, you know, over 25 years. And uh, it comes to you, you know, these stories and they're, they're very large stories, and so sometimes shooting a picture for the Geographic is, as I described, a saga. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, chapter okay. one. All right, chapter so one. chapter this one. I got assigned to do telescopes, okay? okay. Telescopes, um, major telescopes on lonely mountaintops, shooting them is like the sixth circle of hell or something <laughs> like that. You get exiled to telescopes. I think I had, I don't know, screwed up my last job or the editors didn't like me, and he sits in his office and kind of wheezes and, and uh, you know, he's like, he, he, is, he is banished. Make him shoot telescopes. Now he will know why he fears the darkness. Um, or something like that, I'm sure it was um, a, a, a occurred, you know. Um, and so I went off to do telescopes. I did two different telescope stories. And these are huge instruments that we observe the heavens through. They're 20, 25 story buildings. They're out in the middle of nowhere by necessity. Uh, and so to light and shoot these things is a travail. So I went and we couldn't open the slit doors on this particular telescope at the time I visited, so I did an interior picture. We're talking about the world's largest binocular telescope that lives atop Mount Graham in Arizona. And I worked very hard because it is, it is you know, a 20 plus story building, catwalks and huge expanses, shot it with a fisheye lens, big mirrors and everything all over the place. Probably, I think it took me two days, I lit the interior, and as I was shooting it, you know, have you ever had that kind of a job where you're working away at it and you know you're just not getting it? You're just sucking at it. You know, and you feel this deadness in your soul and you kind of gamely, you know, push it on because you gotta be a pro and you gotta see it through. And, and at the end of it, I was like, well, that was a lot of effort for nothing because this picture sucks. Mm -hmm. And I brought it back to my editor and <laughs> he concurred. Um, yeah. Yeah, you said. But that's amazing because to me, I'm, I mean, I'm, I looked at it. And to me, it's an awesome picture. But it, why did it suck to you? Why is that a failure? I because I knew the real picture lived elsewhere. I knew the real picture was outside, mm -hmm. you know. And I knew this was uh, a stopgap, a make work. You know, I was there. Let's do something. And you know, my editor agreed. He said, "All right, no, you got to go back." And and you know, in his uh, spirit of jocularity, he you know had sent me a game plan that he refused to speak to me so he sent me this this um, set of drawings on yellow lined paper and it was just the mandate on it was just go shoot these and a bunch of stick drawings of these various telescopes yeah. go and shoot these so I countered okay um, with my own drawing mm -hmm. uh, they asked me for a coverage plan so I thought well I'll no. I'll fight fire with fire here. So I sent back a, a cartoon of myself as a young man deploying a telescope in an interesting, time. yeah, okay. interesting fashion, you know. Uh, Do we need any sensor for this? this uh, I don't think so. Time. I mean, it's, you know, it's a... Oh, uh, it's, it's a work of art. It's, it's cool, right? I mean, I mean it, there's it's, nudes there, but that's art. It's art, it's art, yeah. I, really I, art. I love the way you think, you know. <laughs> um, and so they didn't oh appreciate that, Look you know. Look at the smile on that little boy's face. Yep, yep. And the uh, early version of Numb Nuts there. <laughs> So I convinced them to let me go back and I organized a coverage that involved uh, the biggest boom crane truck we could mm -hmm. get up that mountain. 220 switchbacks or something like that, crazy. Mm -hmm. And a national park and an endangered species area. It's evidently the top of Mount Graham is where the red squirrel likes to fornicate. And you don't want to upset the little darlings. And so, 
you had to be really careful because these, these critters are the last of their kind and so it's very regulated. So lots of permits went into this, lots of preparation. My studio manager, Lynn, what a saint she is. She drilled through this. The fact is the local population wanted the story to happen because the observatory up there is a big source of jobs and sure. attraction and income. Mm -hmm. And so we did drill through it and we got permission to get this truck up there. And then we had to block it into the hillside. And, um, you know, I get into the cage of the truck or the bucket. And here's a day in the field for the National Geographic. We drove up that morning about 4 a.m. Two panel trucks full of equipment unloaded and myself and a crew of three and then we lit the interior of the scope kind of out of my head because I didn't have my vantage point. You can only open the slits of these telescopes when it gets dark because the mirrors are so sensitive to light. So you have to wait for dusk or near dusk. So I got it as set as I could, and then I, was, I got radioed up and, you know, cameras and went up into the upper reaches of the, uh, of the boom capability, uh, 175 feet, has a wind tolerance of 25 miles an hour. Mm. So it was a little nerve wracking, for, mostly for the folks on the ground. I didn't, you know, I'm like, I'm going to get this photograph. Don't bring this crane down. Um, but, you know, the, the, the boom is shivering. It's, it's, it's snaking, you know, and, and the wind is moving around. You're on top of 11,500 foot mountain. Mm. And then, of course, they open the slit doors. And I have, at that point, probably less than an hour because I'm facing west mm -hmm. for sunset, scope. But behind me, de facto, is the eastern sky, which is getting dark very rapidly. And you need reflection in the mirrors. So as soon as that sky behind me goes black, mm -hmm. the mirrors become like black bullet holes right. in the photograph. And you don't really have a photograph. So right. a lot of effort for nothing. So. I'm furiously directing, you know, on radio, and guys are running around, okay, feather this light, turn this light, oh take gracious. that pack and, and jack it down by one stop, take another pack and pump the level up behind, and we are scrambling. And I got about, probably about 30 usable frames, and one of them ended up as the opening uh, two-page spread for the story called Cosmic Vision. And now, when I first look at this, it's like, oh, cool, but you look at how massive you can see little tiny specks of people in there. This is massive. Mm -hmm. And how, how difficult was it for you to, I mean, you're on radio, right? Mm -hmm. But you're directing how many people? That's three. I had a crew of three. A crew of three. You know? And then the, you know, the hard part of the job or the unsexy part of it is at the end of the day, you're like, okay, do we want to come back up here tomorrow? Not really. So let's bust it. And so we busted all the lights back down, packed up the trucks, and drove off the mountain at about 3 o'clock the following morning so it was 24 straight hours you know on location oh. and, uh, and you know a lot of people don't realize what it takes to do something like that no I mean you know you know lots of people rightly don't care they just look and say hey, it's a cool picture like nobody's ever going to shoot another picture like that oh. of Mount Graham because nobody's going to have the funding and nobody's going to be stupid yeah. enough to say well this is <laughs> this is what we should be doing yeah. and I mean it you know I mean at the end of the day who cares you know I mean it's like well I shot this picture but so what <laughs> but you have to challenge yourself personally and professionally when you're in the field to do a good job for the magazine you're representing and the editors were like Thank you very much, Joe. That was it. We might be calling you again in the future, depending on our needs. <laughs> <laughs> it's wildly enthusiastic, you know, uh, when you when you do well at a place like the Geographic. I mean, being a freelancer, you have to accept that, sure. you know. The magazine moves on, yeah. you know, and they're a big institution. You're just this tiny little person, and every once in a while, they're going to look at you, you know, and, and every once in a while they give you a good story. So, uh, and you know what I love about you is that you bring into full perspective because in the photography industry, there are gods, okay? There are mm -hmm. gods of awesomeness in this silly little celebrity world, and you're one of them. You're one of those mm -hmm. gods, Joe McNally. But to National Geographic, it's like you're one of many talented people, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you've done, I mean, that's a gorgeous photo. And to put into perspective what it took to do that is amazing. You know, I, I never he have, downplayed you know, I, I've never bit into that whole thing about certain photographers. I mean, there are certain photographers I revere, yeah. 
you know, they're oftentimes not the ones of the moment, you know. Sure. Uh, the, I, I tend to revere the historically important people, people I knew, people I, who mentored me when I was growing up. So there are important photographers out there, Absolutely. to be sure. Yeah. But the whole cult of celebrity that surrounds certain types of photographers is a mystery to me because, you know, we're fellas, we're cogs in a big wheel here, you know? I mean, and the, the thing about it, I've always felt is, is, and maybe this comes from having grown up in newspapers and wire services, it's your job to get out of the way, yeah. right? Your, your picture has to maintain a direct connection to your reader. And uh, if you get involved in that, or if you trumpet yourself or somehow, act, you know, announce your presence. I don't know how you would even do that, sure. but but I think the main thing is you drop out of the equation, let the picture go do its work. And then in the meantime, you move on. I mean, because, you know, this is a tough business. You can't dwell on what you shot last year or last week. You have to be out there looking for work, yeah. you know, and that's what we do at the studio. We seek work. Mm -hmm. You're busting your beauty. You're not just sitting in front of the computer. I no, mean, God, there's I a lot of hate. relationships that you have to you're making phone calls, you're writing proposals, you're uh, liaisoning with people, you're seeing if anybody's interested in you. Yeah. No, I love it, I love it. <laughs> in, in my case, <laughs> Melissa, that's any, a, a dwindling minority of people. Oh my goodness, you're crazy. <laughs> well, Joe, I think this is a very unique story because, okay, uh, my question. Mm. Did the editors like, did, did you follow their drawings? Did they, did they oh yeah, I got, I got most of those. Uh, did yeah. you get it? I did. I got a whole bunch of <laughs> of those uh, various kinds Good. of yeah. Um, they wanted the laser coming out of the Palomar telescope. You got them. I got I got that laser. Job that was an well interesting done. picture. Job yeah. well done. Yep. Well, Joe, if people are hiding under a rock and haven't seen your work, where can we find your work? Uh, JoeMcNally dot com, okay. <laughs> and my blog is JoeMcNally dot com backslash blog. Black Black slash blog. Black slash. Well, Joe, thank you. you are, you're on TV. I know, you talk. I know. This is me. Okay, you're getting me. <laughs> that's a joke. See, I, that's what I tell you. I discombobulate I know. you. Oh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. You're awesome. It's Thanks good so to much. see you again.